Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. Hope you all have had a fantastic week and are ready for some great weekend shenanigans. Today, we're going to do something new. No, 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 don't panic. It, we're, it's not that new. It's not like we're watching Willy Wonka or anything. Uh, but we are going to add another amazing martial artist to the channel, Jean-Claude Van Damme, or JCVD for short. And thanks to our fellow subscriber, who I didn't at all pressure to pick a movie, so uh, don't believe him is Last Samurai. Thank you so much. You have picked Bloodsport today, which I'll be honest, I kind of knew you were going to pick this movie, but I mean, come on. Of course you have to watch Bloodsport first, as it's the iconic JCVD starting movie. It technically isn't his first movie, uh, but it is his first movie where he is the main character. But I mean, I doubt we wanted to watch him in the movie Breakin'. You know what? Actually, we can do that. Okay, let's go. <laughs> There we go. That was it. <laughs> that's that's all the movie he's in. Um, but enough distractions. Let's get to it because this new series is all about Jean-Claude Van Damme and I'm calling it JC Van Damme it. Uh, that is very clever. I absolutely came up with it all on my own with no help from anybody else. So don't even ask. But this is Red Eye Reviews. So Bloodsport came out in 1988, and it is another amazing film that Canon Films has graced us with. Before I get into the plot, I have a few things to talk about. For one, JCVD got this role by running into Menahem Gollin on the streets, and he said, Hey, do you remember me from that great movie Breakin'? Uh, and then he did a kick over his head, like inches from this man's face, and he said, I'm sold. Yeah, I want to put you in a movie, and uh, that's it. And that's another reason I love Canon Films. A man almost kicks you in the face? That's bold. I like it. Put that man in a movie. This movie also inspired Ed Boon and John Tobias, the creators of Mortal Kombat. Like, for real. They even modeled Johnny Cage after Jean-Claude. So we would not have Mortal Kombat without this movie. So yeah, this movie is legendary, and the story behind the movie is actually supposed to be based on real-life events that have happened to a man called Frank Dukes, who, that's the character uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme plays in the movie, and we're going to talk about him after we go over the plot, so let's go. We start with the all-important training montage, and firstly, just why? Why ice? Like, there, there's no way this is good for training. But more importantly, with the current heat waves going around, uh, screw you. But these men are trying out for an event called the Kumite, a secret underground karate tournament that takes place in Hong Kong. You really going to Hong Kong? I love anything with full contact. Need a few more scars on my face. Uh, buddy, I really don't think you need any more damage happening to your head or face, for that matter. It looks like you have seen plenty of both of those. But then we see our hero, JCVD. And he's in the military, and they, uh, they don't want him to go to the Kumite. Uh, they can't let that happen because, you know, the military spent a lot of money on him, and they don't want him to die in a tournament and, you know, all that jazz. But he, he escapes, you know, goes anyways. He does stop at an old friend's place first, gets a little flashback. Let's get it. Come on, Frank. What's the matter? You chicken? No. Then get in here. Yeah. Uh, child Frank Dukes here. He sounds about as sure as I would have at that age. You just gonna stand there? You're gonna grab something. Shit, coming back. Let's get out of here. And this old man, whose name is Sinzo Tanaka, catches him and tries to kill his hat. I wasn't going to steal it. That could have ended horribly. Uh, but because the boy didn't flinch, he's like, hmm, I could use this kid to train my kid. So he calls little Frank Dukes' his parents over and they all chat. I came here to grow fish in my hatchery. We both grow children. Like vines. Children need training. Brings mind, body, spirit together. And yeah, you started pretty strong. I think your old man brain maybe drifted off a bit on some topics. But it doesn't matter because it works. And Frank is used to train Tanaka's kid. That's all for today. Not yet. 
Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I, God, I can appreciate this kid's attempt at acting, but he is terrible. Uh, we do learn in present time that Tanaka's kid has died, and all he wanted to do was fight in the Kumite, which is why Frank is here, to train and fight in his place. And then Tanaka's like, uh, yeah, fine, I'll train you, I guess. And it's hilarious. Like, the whole training montage, he looks genuinely bored to be teaching him how to fight. There's like a point where he's just like chilling on the mat, and he's still winning. <laughs> he's just sitting down. Or like for shits and giggles, he blindfolds himself and still dominates. There's even a point at the end, he just is straight up torturing him. And he's like, ah, yeah, this stupid guy will let me do anything. As long as I call it teaching. Ooh. Is it is it just me or does anybody else feel this like sexual tension in the air right now? Like th this is a little bit kinky. Yes, I have one more test, and you will be a real man. Ugh, ugh. What is wrong with me today? Dirty thoughts this early into the video? Uh, sorry in advance. You guys are going to be in for a weird video. <laughs> stop. Oh, okay, for real, I would really like to stop imagining these two in bed together. Let's just skip this scene, please. Basically, in that scene, Tanaka's like, you're ready to go fight in the Kumite. That's all you need to know. And parting is such sweet sorrow, and get the hell out of here. So he heads to Hong Kong. You two are here for the Kumite, aren't you? Look, guys, I know there's a secret full contact event being held in Hong Kong in the next few days. Is it a secret event? That's what everyone keeps saying, but it seems like absolutely everybody in this movie knows about it. If you want to see some real fighting, you can see me fight at the Kumite. I'm here, too, for the Kumite. Because, yeah, apparently, the first rule of the Kumite is to tell everybody about the Kumite. But Frank meets this guy, Ray Jackson, and they hit it off as friends. Ray is awesome. Aren't you a little young for full contact? Aren't you a little old for video games? I do feel personally attacked, because, uh, sir, video games, they're a generational thing. You know, okay? It's not, it's not about your age. But moving on, during this time, the military police are trying to find Frank and bring him back. And it's Forrest Whitaker. Wow, he looks young. Uh, he was 27 in this movie. That's awesome. That's crazy. Uh, they obviously don't find him at Tanaka's house because they broke up weeks ago. So we cut back and Frank and Ray go into the Kumite event. It says he represents the Tanaka clan. If Senzo Tanaka is his Shidoshi... Then show us the gim mock. Oh, you don't want to see his gim mock, sir. What the hell is a gim mock? Well, I'll tell you, Ray. The gim mock is JCVD's signature move. Well, okay, Frank Dukes' signature move, a.k.a. the death touch. It's where he can transfer power through an object to affect something deeper. So, like, punch you in the gut, but pop your heart. <laughs> it's awesome. It's totally not a real thing that anybody could do, and we will talk about that in a bit, but it's still awesome. Meanwhile, the police have now arrived in Hong Kong, and they ask the local authorities for help. Maybe already left. Went somewhere else. <laughs> Asia is a very big place, you know. Wow, Asia is a big place. You're correct. It's weird you're flexing the size of a continent. Uh, maybe you should talk about the Pacific Ocean next. That is also very big. And then we get what, in my opinion, is Van Damme's most iconic split. Okay, well, it's at least my favorite split, because it is so unnecessary. Like, he does not need to be doing this right now, but he's also shredded. So, I'm not going to tell him otherwise. Do whatever you want, sir. They head off to the Kumite. A couple of fights go off, then Ray gets on and destroys his opponent. <laughs> Jesus, Ray, maybe calm down a bit. Uh, this is round one, and technically, if I'm being technical, in a tournament bracket of this size, it's pretty unlikely you'll ever fight that guy. 
and this guy runs up and he like starts cleaning the blood off the stage and he's kicking himself because they made the stage with white fabric and he's like Ugh, there is not enough oxyclean in the world for this damn place that's john lee the current champ he's never been defeated he killed a guy during the last comedy yep he kicked the poor bastard right in the throat john lee stood there and watched him die wait that's the guy you mean the one you just threatened to murder he's the current champion and he killed a guy and he watched him die Dude, why the hell would you threaten him? The dude just bowed with his goddamn pecs. Ray, you are in trouble. In the meantime, Frank does his first fight and dominates his poor dude, setting a new world record. His opponent basically dies of, like, embarrassment. And then we get my favorite fighter of the whole tournament. Is this a real fighting style? I don't think so. I, I So I went down a deep dive on the internet, and no one knows what this fighting style is. Uh, there's something called Monkey Kong Fu, which is close, but it's not this. I would guess this is like Monkey Capoeira, maybe, but it's not totally even that. It is awesome, and I did learn the fighter has a name, Ricardo Mora, uh, so I learned, you know, something. Meanwhile, our two cops have, like, kind of given up, and they go and get some lunch. What a pleasant surprise. Please join us. No, I never eat here. And then just a little bit of a travel tip for you. If you go to another country and you see a restaurant where only other tourists are eating, uh, don't eat there. They do run into Van Damme and they chase him all across the city. He eventually gets away. It, well, he easily gets away. And he goes back to the tournament and we see Frank and Ray are both still advancing. And uh, fun fact here, this fighter he's fighting, that's veteran Hong Kong stunt performer and top-notch martial artist, Yushu Wu, who is insanely talented, and he was actually told to tone down his kicking skills to make Van Damme look better, because, yeah, the guy's like, he's legit, he's a real freaking deal. Yes, go Ricardo Mora. See, I knew learning his name would come in handy at some point. Oh, why am I so nervous for this fight? Like, I kind of care more about this fight than, like, JCVD's fight. No, no, uh, he's cheating. Foul. No, two fouls. Ah, Ricardo no Moro. But then Frank gets in. He fights a beast. We get the death touch to the stomach. Actually, you know what? I lied. That? What we just saw, that's the real death touch. When in doubt, just punch him in the crotch. And then Ray fights Chung Lee. And it starts really well until he starts boasting. Jackson! 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 No! Jackson! Dude, have you ever watched Game of Thrones? Never show off until your opponent's done done, dude. Yeah, that's what happens, Ray. Ray gets defeated. He goes to the hospital. Chung Lee steals his headband like a complete jerk. And Frank is obviously sad. He goes into like one of those memory flashbacks where it's just clips from the movie we've been watching. And he's thinking about all of his loved ones, including his old lover, you know. And okay, I, I know I said I would stop talking about the old man, but just hear me out real quick. This scene kind of solidifies my theory that they were romantically involved, right? Like, he trained hard with this dude for months, and I'm sure there were numerous trainings and speeches, but when he thinks back on his old man master, he just remembers, like, some cute little pillow talk. <laughs> Confirmed! So the final set of matches are about to start. The cops attempt to arrest him again. Right here. And he takes this dude out easily, and they're like, huh, did, did he just kick that guy's ass with a gym bag? Okay, yeah, this this might have been a bad idea. Wait, you only brought two cops? That's it? Hey, I did the best I could. It's it's food truck day at work. Nobody wanted to miss out. Yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> he convinces them to let him fight. It's basically how that plays out. And then the final fight begins between Chung Lee and Frank Dukes. And this lady and the cops show up to watch the finals because they kind of just like gave up on arresting him. <laughs> Oh 
Okay, I love this scene where it's like everyone's trying to bet all at once. And there's like, <laughs> there's just like a guy taking money. He's not writing anything down. He's like the waiter at a restaurant who's like, I don't need to write your order down. I'm really good at remembering stuff. And you know, you're like, can you just write it down so you don't keep coming back and asking me because we all know you're going to forget. Yeah, this is like the bookie version of that guy. 100%, he's going to pocket this buddy. He's gone. But the fight kicks off. It's amazing. I will say the most unrealistic part of the whole event is that these cops and that girl show up late and somehow get front row seats calling bullshit real hard. But as Van Damme is kicking some ass, Lee cheap shots him with like drug powder in the eyes and he starts tripping balls super hard. And then we get the scene, which in my opinion, I think is the moment in the movie where we all fell in love with Jean-Claude Van Damme and realized just how amazing and badass he is. Like, that's so cool. I don't know why. I love that. That is so cool. But Lee is going a bit crazy. Frank has regained his focus. And even the referee is like, Jean-Claude, protect me from this lunatic. <laughs> He's like hiding behind him. But he does defeat Chong Lee. And not just defeat him. But it's important to point out, he gets him to say that he gives up. That he quits. And more importantly, he doesn't kill him like we all knew Chong Lee would have done. He goes back to Ray in the hospital, gives him back his headband. They share like a super touching moment. In time, any place, anywhere, if you ever need me. And it's great. Like genuinely, you know that maniac means that too. But then at the end of the movie, Frank does actually go with the cops. He faces his punishment for running away. And oh God, you guys have to fly United? Well, the karate movie is ending, but their own personal horror story is just beginning. Okay, if you have never seen Bloodsport, go and watch it. Like, right now. It's incredible. It really is. I left a handful of details out of that synopsis, but the reason I did that is because I really want to talk about the actual person that is Frank Dukes. So yeah, he is a real guy and was actually the fight coordinator for this movie. He claimed all of this is a true story based on stuff he actually did. He also claims he was an undercover CIA operative, so he appeared in Hollywood with this insane story about the secret tournament he was a part of. He claimed that he scored 56 knockouts in the Kumite tournament. The lie detective determined that was a lie. And yeah, it turns out it was all a lie. He lied his way into Hollywood with the story. Uh, no martial artist at that time or ever have ever heard of such a tournament happening, and he was never in the CIA. Uh, the Freedom of Information Act shows he was in the Marine Corps Reserves, but he was never even posted overseas. And most people even think his personal style of martial arts, which he calls Duke's Rai Jitsu, uh, is entirely made up. If we cut back to the end of the movie, they show some stuff on screen about what he claims he has done in 329 matches in five years. That's, that's literally a fight every five days for all five years. Not just that, but undefeated. He won all of those, apparently. Fastest knockout, 3.2 seconds. Fastest punch with a knockout, 0.12 seconds. And I don't I don't get that. Like, did they time the punch? If they did, I think that's faster than, like, Bruce Lee. And then the next stat is almost self-aware, and it realizes that the stat above it makes no sense, so it changes to miles per hour when they talk about kicks. And then we see 56 consecutive knockouts in a single tournament. Which, let's just break that down. If he did 56 knockouts in one tournament, and it's a bracketed tournament like we're showing in this movie, just doing simple math, that's over 72 quadrillion fighters would have had to be in this tournament. Which, I don't know if you know the population of the world, but that's about 10 million times it. I also found some footage of him showing off on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, he's breaking glass of the song Bad to the Bone. And I guess nobody in the audience knows what sugar glass is. Because this, that's sugar glass. Sugar glass is like, when you see a guy in a movie smash a bottle over somebody's head, it's sugar glass. It's not real glass, obviously. And this, ha it has to be sugar glass. Like, <laughs> there's even this part where he eats shit and he falls down. And he lands on all of this apparent glass. Doesn't get hurt at all. You know why? Because uh, it's sugar glass, that's why. And then the death touch punch that uh, is in the movie, yeah, he claims that's a real thing. 
And he went on TV to showcase it. And let's look. The bottom brick, and I'll leave the top one. That's intact. all, just the bottom one? Yeah, I'll break the brick. Okay. The bottom one. Go for it, Frank. Which now, you're going to break this brick down here, not the little ones that you put in there. That's right. Oh, my heavens. Hey, and I will demonstrate <laughs> these two not broken, ladies and gentlemen. Which, that's hilarious to me, because it's basically it's a magic trick is what it is like if you know anything about how force works you know that putting a tiny tile in between these bricks will transfer all the force into a much smaller like surface area which when that gets transferred in the bottom brick yeah just breaks so i guess you know woohoo you uh you broke a brick but like literally any of us could go do this right now but okay enough enough of this enough shitting on this guy if you want a deep rabbit hole check out frank dukes like, dare I say, I think the man's crazier than Steve Seagal. But we're going to move past it, and we're going to move on to Red Eye Reacts. The colonel found out you're going to Hong Kong. Tell him I'll be right there after I take a shower. But I'll have to wait, sir. Yeah, the colonel likes his men sweaty and smelly. Okay, you can uh, take the blindfold off now. No. My training is not complete. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Hey, babe. You want to go out with a real big man? No, huh? <laughs> Ray is so used to rejection, he literally didn't even wait for her to answer. Okay, USA. Okay, USA. Wow, you're a part of the Kumite? I sure am. Well, what do you do? Well, I, uh, I, 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 wave a, I wave a flag. I'm a flag waver. Take a brick. Any brick. I know. Bottom one, right? <laughs> see? Not a scratch on it. Okay. What you're about to see, I don't own. I'm going to put credit down to it in the description, but it's way too goddamn funny not to put in this video, so here we go. the fresh maker okay that was everything that was a long video i hope you guys enjoyed it thanks again to the last samurai for suggesting this movie i am not sure what we will watch next with jcvd but put some suggestions down in the comments if you liked what you saw make sure to subscribe if you're not a subscriber already uh hit the bell to get reminded like the video do leave some comments try to death touch a brick i'm curious if you guys could do it i bet you can but we will see you in the next one. If you live in the States, have a great 4th of July weekend and stay happy and stay healthy.